Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Irwin Fashions Limited Q4 FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Ankit Arora, Head Investor Relations at Advent Fashion. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Vivian. Hello, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us on Arvind Fashions Limited earnings conference call for the fourth quarter and fiscal year ended March 31st, 2022. I am joined here today by Kurin Dalbhai, non-executive director, Shailesh Chaturvedi, managing director and CEO, and Piyush Gupta, our chief financial officer. Please note that results, press release, and earnings presentation had been emailed across to you on Friday. And these are also now available on our website, www.arvindfashions.com. I hope you had the opportunity to browse through the highlights of the performance. We shall commence the call with Kulin providing his key thoughts on our financial performance for the fourth quarter. He shall be followed by Shalish, who will the insights into our business, brands, and financial performance, and key priorities for us moving forward. At the end of the management discussion, we'll have a Q&A session. Before we start, I would like to remind you that some of the statements made or discussed on this call today may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in conjunction with risks and uncertainties we face. A detailed statement of these risks is available in this quarter's earnings presentation as well. The company does not undertake to update these forward-looking statements publicly. With that said, I would now turn the call over to Colin to share his views. Thank you and over to you, Colin. Sanket. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Q4 results. FY22 was a turnaround year for AFL, and we have emerged as a much more focused, healthier, and profitable company. In spite of two COVID waves, AFL was able to grow its revenues by 32% and posted a net profit of 40 crores in the second half of FY22. We dramatically improved our balance sheet with a net debt reduction of more than 525 crores in the year and reached an inventory turn of four times in the second half of the year, surpassing our commitment given at the start of the year. We have a focused portfolio of market-leading brands that have a leadership position in their respective segments and are being re-energized to take full advantage of the market opportunity ahead. Q4 was a very strong quarter for us and continued on the momentum that we saw in Q3, even though we were impacted by the third COVID wave in January and early February, our sales for the quarter were up 34% year on year. Bidda, after adjusting for rental concessions, which we had last year in Q4, was up 36%. The retail channel turned around delayed. The like-for-like -like sales growth for the quarter was 15%, and if we remove the impact of January, the like-for-like -like sales growth in Feb and March was 20%. This performance was made possible by the re-energizing of our retail network, a timely launch of the season, and new product innovations launched across our different brands. The department store channel, which had shown sluggishness till quarter three, saw a strong rebound in quarter four, with sales which were up more than two times over last year. The NBO channel has also shown very strong performance. With tight inventory management policies in place, this business delivered strong tertiary growth. Our online business ended the year at close to 1,000 crores. We expect strong momentum to continue in the online channel, powered by new category expansion, our omni-channel push, and the strong leadership position of our brands in the, cha in the channel. Our balance sheet position continues to improve. We achieved an inventory turn of four times for the second half of the year. This was made possible by the supply chain redesign that we are currently implementing. As we continue to transform our supply chain into an agile and responsive one, we expect our inventory turns to further improve. We also saw a huge improvement in debtor days, which has fallen to 68 days in FY22. This has been possible due to strong controls and disciplined execution in the wholesale channel. Our net working capital for the year ended at 489 crores, which is 118 crores lower than last year. We were able to further reduce our debt this quarter and ended the year with a net debt of 397 crores. 
We are excited about FY23. With the turnaround complete, we expect the business to gain momentum in the coming year. We expect the retail and online channels to continue to drive growth and account for 60 to 65 percent of our overall sales. Retail growth will be driven by a continued push on productivity and sell through, as well as by the strong expansion into new towns. We expect online growth to remain robust even on a large base. Our new focus areas of footwear, innerwear, and kids' wear will see rapid growth. While we have multiple, multiple growth drivers, the focus will be on profitable growth and improving ROCI. An improved performance in Arrow, improvement in margins due to better sell throughs, and operating leverage due to higher scale will lead to a much improved profitability. We look to further improve our inventory turns with the help of our supply chain transformation efforts. Profitable growth coupled with strong working capital controls will allow us to invest in technology and store expansions and still generate free cash flow to bring down debt further next year. I would now like to hand it over to Shailesh to take us through more details. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Colleen. Um, good afternoon, friends. With rupees 917, 917 crore revenue, and a bit of growth of 36% net of ready concession, there has been a consistency in AFL's performance in quarter four. In the previous quarter, quarter three, which was the October, December quarter, was a thousand crore plus revenue quarter with 30% revenue growth. Q4 has kept pace with the previous quarter. It's been a very large revenue quarter with 917 crores, second highest in last many, many years and maintain growth at 30% plus at 34%. So AFL's H2 revenue was rupees 1925 crores, uh, which was a 32% growth over previous years H2. <clears throat> EBITDA has also consistently grown in Q3. In the previous quarter, EBITDA growth was 64%. And in Q4, despite COVID impact in Jan and in early Feb, EBITDA growth is 36% net of rent concession. Overall, AFL has delivered rupees 200 crore EBITDA in H2 at a growth of 30% with a scale of 1925 crores. October, December quarter had seen brisk business as consumers had started shopping with energy. But even in that quarter, we had started seeing cracks in the second half of December, due to the onset of COVID wave three, and it led to severe restrictions on retail in Jan uh, 22 across the country. Even as the Jan numbers got impacted due to COVID, we started seeing recovery in second half of February. March was a fantastic month with an overall growth of 70% in revenue in March, which was around 90 crores of growth over this year's March backed by 45% growth in retail business. Department store also business, which was at around 55% recovery in November and December last year, has shown big strides. And in Q4, department store business has more than doubled over previous year, quarter four. We maintain consistency in gross margins also at around 45% plus, despite continued inflationary pressures. With our pricing power of brands, internal efficiencies, higher like for like uh, same store sales growth, higher full price sell through and resulted lower discounting, we ensured that second half gross margin improved by <clears throat> more than 180 basis points to 45.3% over similar period last year. While retail had grown 40% like for like in October, December, it continued to grow at 20% plus like for like in Feb and March after COVID impacted January. The fall holiday season that got, got over in Feb, mid February saw all time full price sell throughs. I'm very happy to share that this retail energy has continued into spring summer 22 season where we are seeing bumper full price sell throughs in February to May period. Spring summer 22 sell-throughs are likely to be even higher than 
FH21 season where <clears throat> we had seen uh, much lower discounting. These retail metrics have looked up because of our focused execution on new way of developing merchandise close to season, launching season with higher energy, backed by stronger storytelling, better visual merchandising, and a lot of emphasis on staff training. With our tight control on OTB for buying and focus on high stock terms, very high percentage of our inventory in the market is very fresh today. And fresh merchandise supports higher like for like growth, higher full price sell through, and better gross margin. We consistently delivered 45% plus uh, gross margin in H2, and we aim to improve further in FY23. Iconic, our, our iconic brand, US Polo Association, has been strengthening its leadership with improved profitability in the market. USPA had grown more than 40% in Q3 with double digit pre indias EBITDA, and it has continued to grow at 44% with double digit pre indias EBITDA in Q4 also. We have significantly refreshed the brand with new brand campaign on the theme of twinning with Arjun Rampal. We have developed a high quality new store identity and made significant improvement to USPA's product lines. The launch of the largest USPA store in Express Avenue Mall in Chennai recently has been a key highlight of quarter four. Adjusted categories of USPA, including footwear, innerwear, kidswear, have continued their profitable growth journey, and USPA is likely to deliver a scale of 1,500 crore plus in FY23 with double digit post India's EBITDA margins. In a couple of years, we see the brand reaching the next logical milestone of sales and profitability, and it'll remain in the top few brands in this segment in the country. While COVID impact has been a serious challenge for Arrow, our formal brand, and <clears throat> COVID impacted its Q4 financial, I believe the worst is behind us on Arrow due to significant sell-through improvement that we saw earlier in Q3 along with very high like-for-like -like growth in trade channel in Arrow. Backed by our product refresh strategy in Arrow, Q4 saw further gaining of momentum in spring-summer season with Arrow brand turning around its performance significantly with very good like-for-like -like growth, further improvement of mid-teen percentage, uh, very high mid-teen percentage in full-price sell-throughs and strong reduction in markdowns in Arrow. With a large put, print expansion underway in Arrow. These results reflect the sharp rebound in Arrow, and we believe the brand will deliver better profitability in FY23. At the same time, our two market-leading brands in the super premium to bridge to luxury segment, Tommy Hilfiger and Calvin Klein, have delivered a great performance in quarter four despite COVID in Jan. Both delivered strong <coughs> double-digit uh, pre indias EBITDA, and huge like-to-like -like growth more than 20% with significant improvement in stock terms. Sephora, another of our prestige brands, also delivered strong performance in Q4 with more than 50% growth in the quarter. With continued success of these market-leading brands, AFL has demonstrated its capability of nurturing and then fast developing premium brands of repute in India. Flying Machine has continue to do so, do very well in segment of denim wear for youth, and get significantly an appeal with consumers with online first mindset due to its partnership with Flipkart Group. Like <clears throat> we said earlier, this financial year FY22 that's gone by has seen big transformational changes at AFL. The company fought two rounds of COVID waves, strengthened its balance sheet through capital raise, saw rapid and consistent recovery with healthy, profitable growth across our brands with sharper execution focus and has significantly deleveraged its balance sheet. We have continued to focus on improved stock turns with transformation projects on supply chain and results are showing with stock turns in H2 being four times. We believe that 
the gain from supply chain initiatives, we are likely to increase our stock turns further in FY23. We made sustained effort this year to reduce debt. The net debt now stands near 400 crore mark. We, opportunity, we see opportunity to further reduce debt in FY23, even if after funding our growth aspirations. With better stock turns, free cash generation for business, and tight control on balance sheet, we are <clears throat> able, we should be able to fund growth momentum without increasing net debt. With this, I hand over to Ankit uh, for the further proceedings. Ankit, over to you. Thanks, Alice. Uh, Vivian, we can open it up for uh, Q&A now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may kindly press star 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Nishit Rati from CWC. Kindly proceed. Uh, uh, congratulations, Shailesh and Colleen. Uh, amazing uh, quarter. Uh, you, it was a really challenging year, and you guys have really, really uh, done well. Uh, just, you know, uh, my, my point was basically, you know, we seem to be doing well almost on two and a half out of the three parameters we are set for ourselves, right? So uh, the revenue seems to have come back the stock turn uh, and the, uh, the uh, uh, balance sheet turns are, are looking really uh, decent. Uh, the only question that I have is, uh, do we, is it that, you know, we'll have to uh, settle for a slightly lower margin to kind of, uh, uh, to, to get, achieve these objectives or, or can we also expect our margins to kind of keep moving forward because you, you know, Certain brands are showing that, but on an overall basis, on an overall company basis, how should we think about it? Uh, hi, uh, Smith. See, we have a uh, stated guideline uh, on this that in next 12 to 18 months, uh, we want to see a double-digit power brand EBITDA across our portfolio. And we see, you know, opportunity to grow our margin through many uh, uh, means currently. While sale side, we have seen a lot of levers, digital, uh, adjacent category, small town expansion, sales density. On margin side also, we believe that the, we will start seeing the operating leverage uh, through larger scale. So post-COVID, last year also saw, uh, you know, two rounds of COVID, whereas we, grew significantly in our scale, but uh, we see opportunity to grow further. Uh, maybe a growth because uh, on the net base of COVID, so that COVID impacted months will be a larger bump. And then there is a further 12 to 15%, more like 15% this year uh, growth. So we believe that operating leverage will come through uh, that increased scale. Second point, like I said in my uh, uh, opening comments, that Arrow is a <clears throat> brand. We are now seeing the green shoots of recovery, and we are very confident that the worst is behind us on that, and it'll start del delivering uh, initial round of profit. Also, our KPIs on full price fell through uh, the way we are launching season. We expect the discounting will come down, which will further increase our margin. Also, <clears throat> we have seen large, tight, trade hygiene, uh, the way we manage our NBO channel, very profitability on returns and some of those uh, at cost. So there's a tightness on our management of trade and we are seeing better margin from the trade channel. Also, we have pricing power in our brands. Uh, so while the inflation is uh, there and it's quite high, we've seen the industry is able to pass on uh, uh, price increase till now and our strong brands will have, you know, uh, ability to pass on pricing to consumer in line with the industry practices. So because of all these uh, margin drivers, we believe that uh, our power brand portfolio should reach double-digit <clears throat> pre-indice EBITDA 
in 12 to 18 months. So, uh, uh, Shalish, is it, is it fair to assume that your four power brands, basically US Polo, Tommy, uh, 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 Arrow, uh, uh, and uh, Flying Machine, uh, those will reach double-digit margins, and uh, and CK, I, if I heard it right, is already double-digit margins. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. So, for so five out of our six brands will be double-digit margins uh, in the in the next. Uh, uh, yeah, like our power brand portfolio, uh, we we think we uh, our uh, guidance is that we should hit uh, total portfolio double-digit. Uh, pre indias EBITDA in uh, 12 to 18 months in it. Correct. And we are on course. We are on course for that. Perfect. And, 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 and my assumption is, is none of this is, in fact, you're saying you will improve the terms, uh, right? That is what you're saying, right? Through the initiatives yes. that you've taken. Uh, Mit, uh, we, we believe we have supply chain transformation in the way. We have increased our stock terms. Uh, we had uh, guided uh, that we'll hit four by the end of this year. In the second half of the year, we've hit four tons, and we have further levers to work on our supply chain transformation project is underway. And we see that uh, we will continue to uh, gain tons. Also, COVID slowed down tons a bit. So even in H2, well, even four, uh, Jan uh, stock turn went down because of COVID. So in absence of uh, COVID and the transformation project and the way some of the new practices which will sustain, we uh, are aiming to improve our stock for Sure. One, one last question from my side. You know, uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, the month of March was, was extremely good. And, and I, I read somewhere in your uh, presentation that uh, uh, April and May, uh, the momentum seems to have uh, continued uh, well. Uh, is there anything you can share uh, uh, on that? You know, have we seen a March like improvements uh, continue in in the months of April and May, or or? Uh... Maybe, you know, uh, uh, there was a, a, a sort of a extra hunger, so to say, in March because of the COVID and Feb, uh, uh, Jan, Feb. It was unreal month for the industry and for us. We grew at seventy percent. Uh, that's exceptional, but demand remains. Uh, strong in the short run. So uh, April May numbers are also very good. Uh, I won't use the March as the reference, but if I look at March to May, whatever the numbers we have seen, we are really pleased with the uh, KPIs, the improvement in sell through, the like for like growth. Uh, uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, having a little bit of sort of inventory shortage right now. And, you know, it's a good situation to be in. We are very pleased with the performance of our brands in the market. You no, know, I think this is great. And you know, the most heartening fact is, is the, the, the number of times you have uh, referred to the full price sales and sell throughs, right? You know, uh, it's, 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 it's very good to hear uh, that, that, you know, you're, you're focusing only on, on getting uh, uh, the, the revenue at, at, at the turns you want. And there is, that is very heartening to hear. Thank you very much. I think um, I'll, I'll come back if I have more questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pritesh Cheda from Lucky Investment. Kindly proceed. Yeah, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, you know, uh, the performance is just moving in line with what the strategy you have started out. Uh, sir, just for the second half where we are doing at about 1900 crores of business, it would be very nice if you could share what is the pre index EBITDA margin at this 1900 crores and how much of uh, burn or loss or number is there for Sephora because all the other brands you largely mentioned that they are a double digit. So. Uh, see, uh, we uh, report uh, post index number and uh, in H2, uh, you know, if you look at our 1925 crore NSV, we have a 200 crore uh, EBITDA. EBITDA. This yeah. is pre index so This is post index that number I'm saying, which is 10.4%. Oh. Uh, the pre index uh, tend to be a couple of percentage points lower, but we don't discuss uh, the pre index numbers. Uh, mm. We share the post index number. So you can get a sense from... You know, our, our, our EBITDA at 200 crore has grown at 30% over the previous uh, same period. 
So hmm. we've done well, and our EBITDA percentages and absolute value have improved. Hmm. Okay. And uh, so similarly, you of, can uh, uh, you can take a 400 uh, basis points difference between uh, pre NDAs and post NDAs. 400 basis. Yeah, yeah. close okay. to that. And how much of uh, EBITDA uh, loss are we making in Sephora? Uh, see, again, we don't give brand wise specific but i can tell you that uh, sephora like i mentioned earlier has done really well uh, the growth have been very very encouraging and the uh, business parameters like like to like growth stocks and sephora has improved but uh, we <laughs> don't uh, uh, you know share individual brand numbers okay okay and uh, sir uh, uh, considering that we are also further focusing on improving our inventory turn mm. from the exit of plus 4x and the fact that we are looking at uh, you know improving margin uh, i wanted to understand what is the capex that we have will the capex be less than depreciation number and if that's so then we might actually uh, lead to reducing our debt uh, very soon over the next couple of years we should be a debt free balance sheet so is that correct See, let me start with the debt part. Uh, uh, there is a very likely uh, chance that debt will reduce this year further. So we have now, you know, we had guided in the beginning to 400 crores. Now we are at a, a we had guided for 600 crore. We are now at 400 crore debt, net debt. And this, in FY23, we see a poss possibility of further reduction. I we don't know exactly because market is still volatile. But uh, given the like you said, stock turn improvement. and tight control on working capital and uh, business flowing cash there is a very high probability that debt will further reduce this year uh, whether in future what happened but the the bias is and the trend is towards reducing our commitment is to reduce the debt as fast as possible okay uh, and what will be our capex will our capex be uh... yeah so uh, uh, this year uh, our total capex is around 90 crores a large amount of that is for retail uh, because <clears throat> you know we will renovate couple of stores markets are coming up uh, we will renovate lot of our uh, department store sci so we want to keep the brands very refreshed in the marketplace so that's the main part of it we don't have a, a major capacity expansion of factory or anything or new uh, strong technology but whatever it required to in investment into technology upgrade and also in the retail we will do which will add up to around 90 crores okay and this last one clarification so you know earlier when we were at this uh, you know uh, 20 i think about 3000 crore of business we were doing 8% pre indest so let's say whatever you have referred to for 400 percent is lower than the reported number so is there any cost item which is uh, different in this uh, 1900 crore or let's say annualized 3600 crore of business uh see yeah, our ebitda margins uh, are going up uh, consistently 30% plus we have seen uh, nearly uh, 200 basis point improvement in ebitda in the power brand so we are doing well uh, i think sometimes the covid does impact uh, the ebitda uh, also there is a uh, in the last uh, year there was a rent concession uh, linked to the covid uh, which was around uh, 20 odd crores this year is only 3 crores so that sort of affects the uh, uh, calculation but otherwise uh, we are doing well and we hope to continue to improve ebitda every year okay and uh, do you share a, a strong outlook for the for the april category per se uh, considering what you are seeing uh, after quarter 3 uh, we have seen strong demand uh, back also along with strong cost increase uh, uh, we we believe at afl uh, we will <coughs> grow as per our guidelines which is covid growth uh, so net of covid on top of that uh, we will aim for a 12 to 15% growth and most likely more like 15% in this year so we are sort of seeing strong momentum for our uh, power brands okay and net of covid means adjusting for quarter one number yeah, adjusting for covid so adjusting uh, that uh, 
Yeah, exactly. So, so Jan, reported growth will be much higher. Will have a higher growth. Yeah, reported will be much higher. Yeah, so there will be okay. growth because of COVID uh, base, and then on top of that, uh, okay. 12 to 15 percent. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vaishnavi Mandhaniya from Anand Rati. Kindly proceed. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, so the working capital improvement has been very drastic in this year. So if going forward, if we're focusing more on growth, uh, what kind of working capital should we expect going forward? <clears throat> See, uh, uh, we said earlier that uh, we believe our debt will come down. We believe that working capital will remain time. We see opportunity improve turns, first of all. You know, I mean, so we believe that the working capital will remain uh, in the zone that it is in today. And wherever there is scope to improve turns, etc., we will improve it further. So we, we are in the zone where we can make further improvements in working capital. Uh, but the improvement that we're talking about, will it be obviously on the inventory side with higher turns, there'll be an improvement there. But then from the current 99 days, I think the lowest we've ever gone is 93 days. That was in FI19. So can we go back to that level or should we like assume to, to be lower or even on the receivables front, 68 days probably has been the lowest for us. And on the payable days, 125 has been the highest. So how do we work with these numbers? Uh, I will uh, request Piyush and uh, Ankit to take this question, but I can see that sure. there is still a juice for us to improve working capital. Uh, Ankit, do you want to take this? So, basically, the way you should really look at it is uh, our inventory days will continue to kind of improve from here onwards, uh, as to what you rightly said and as to what Shanish mentioned on inventory terms continue to improve. Our data days, uh, you are absolutely right, has been the lowest, and that's where the entire process controls being put in over the last 12 to 24 months is yielding fruits, and we expect uh, these controls to remain sustainable. On the uh, on the creditor side, uh, you know, it will be uh, unfair uh, or, or not really right to really calculate 125 because, uh, you know, there are two aspects which is being played out uh, here. Vaishnavi is, if you really step back and look on a quarter on quarter basis, our uh, creditors in absolute rupee terms has come down by about 50 crores. But as to what you would understand, we build up for season. Uh, and, uh, you know, which is is a seasonal buildup and that will come down uh, as inventory turn into cash uh, with, with the sales in spring, summer 22. So 125 calculation is more on the base of our current end creditors as a fast 22 versus 3000 crores, which is what we have achieved, which is also actually impacted by COVID. So if you really adjust to that, uh, our, our normalized creditor days uh, should hover in the range of about 90 to 100 days going and that's the reasonable, which is what, as per industry, which is what we will track on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Podar from Safaya Capital. Kindly proceed. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for the opportunity. So I, uh, I, I wanted to understand more on the aspiration uh, front. Now, you did speak about... Uh, uh, EBITDA margin uh, improving year on year, and uh, we'll start seeing the operating leverage advantage. Um, uh, so, so how do you see the aspirational level of EBITDA margin? Uh, maybe next three years, two to three years. You know, uh, our guidance is that in 12 to 18 months, uh, we our power brand portfolio should do double digit pre indice uh, EBITDA, and that's a very key task ahead of us when, you know, we need to uh, achieve this before we, you know, stretch our uh, guidance further. It's better that we focus on this and achieve this and then look at things moving forward after that. Obviously, our aspiration should be <laughs> ambitious and we want to deliver many more, but we have a very clear focus task ahead. Right, right. So, but but currently our P and uh, pre India's power brand, I think in the fourth quarter it was close to about eight percent. Uh, quarter four we had a uh, <clears throat> uh, total uh, total uh, India's was ten percent. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I guess uh, you want to just. Yes, that's uh, a, that's a reported number, uh, uh, Deepak, which is what we are referring to. Yeah. yeah, so reported number, I think in the fourth quarter, we did a bit of uh, 87 crores. 
Yeah, twelve percent. You're right. Twelve uh, percent post in that. Yes, correct. Post in this, and I think you mentioned uh, four hundred basis point difference between pre and post, right? So, so that's how I arrived at eight yes. percent for Indus. So, so we are already at eight percent, right, for power brand. Uh, so, um, uh, so, so, so that's what we are targeting in the next twelve to eighteen months. This eight percent going up to ten percent, eleven percent, double digit, right? Uh, yeah, that's our stated. Uh, game that to uh, you know take the overall portfolio to uh, of the power brands to uh, double digit uh, pre indices yes okay okay uh, uh, fair enough uh, understood yeah i i think yeah that's about it from my side thank you very much all the best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of mayithli babalakrishnan from alchemy kindly proceed hi uh Just a couple of questions. Wanted to understand from you. You're talking about opening 200 plus stores. Um, will they largely be EBOs? Uh, how are you sort of thinking about this expansion? Uh, we we have uh, set up a central sales structure mostly, and we are now going into the smaller towns, smaller tier, uh, great towns, and our teams now are in the field who are scouting for stores. So these will be. individual brand uh, let's say uspas store or an arrow store or a flying machine store or you know uh, tommy sike so these will be the uh, mono brand the ebo as we call it uh, exclusive brand outlet across the country uh, largely through the franchise route got it and the other question which i had was basically on this raw material inflation that we have seen um, it's been a kind of an unprecedented uh, inflation that we have seen so just wanted to get a sense from you as to uh, whether we are passing it on in terms of asp increases and you know what's the response to that and so on see uh, uh, industry and us uh, we are uh, you know trying to pass on the increased cost and it's been on for a year and we'll see further increase in the next season in uh, july august so Uh, we are able to pass on uh, uh, because these brands are strong uh, but i would also say we are holding our uh, gross margin because of rising power as well as from internal efficiency on full price sell through lower discount that lower discount is also helping us to maintain our uh, gross margin at around 45% we have not seen any slip on that so that's the reality and uh, there is further sort of a cost increase for the next season which we also will pass currently uh, the way our consumer metrics are on sales on walk in conversion full price sell through like so they are all very strong so the strong uh, metrics in spring summer seen indicate that that consumers have taken this current price increase well uh, we'll have to see what happens in the next season got it and just to you know question on on the accounting right which is that when we have a minority interest which is around 21 crore um what does it mean about the profitability of the remainder brands in the power uh, in the segment right uh, because <coughs> if you have 21 crores of uh, you know minority going out then uh, and a large profit is i'm assuming ck and th then the profitability of the rest of the brands is, is clearly a bit uh, lower see uh maybe it's a another way to look at is that uspa has a very good profitability and uh, it's growing uh, scale and profitability further like i said earlier uh, it'll be a large scale business in fy23 again and even bigger scale uh, arrow uh, is the uh, concern area i said that whenever covid happens uh, arrow profitability does get impacted and that's why the Uh, when you say net of minority the numbers go down because there's a plus and a minus uh, but what we are seeing that that the worst of arrow is behind us we are seeing very good kpis uh, in this season in april uh, may arrow numbers are looking very uh, good so probably in future you will see the net of minority the numbers will look different then thank you thanks a lot bye thank you The next question is from the line of Rikin Gopani from Capri Global. Kindly proceed. 
Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. I had two questions. Firstly, uh, in your comments, you've outlined that uh, you focus uh, next year on scaling up the adjacencies significantly. So what is uh, the, uh, the number currently, if you can sort of highlight, and what's the growth in that segment for you today? And which brands have uh, adjacencies which have become meaningful? So uh, let me start. Uh, sorry, that was the first question, Ajay. Any? What is the second question? I'll 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 follow it up oh, later. Maybe okay. You so so you know, uh, AFL uh, invested ahead of time in very dedicated uh, resources behind adjacent category, created a separate footwear team and division for US polo brand and uh, uh, innerwear brand. So uh, to answer the question on which uh, brand, uh, US polo was the first uh, brand that we focused on and parallelly on the other side, Tommy has a very large uh, portfolio of adjacencies, including watches and footwear and uh, eyewear and you know uh, other businesses. Uh, also, uh, Kidwear was a focus uh, team in US Polo. So the adjacency category that we are talking about today, Kidwear, we are talking about footwear, we are talking about innerwear, and then there's opportunity to add category like women's wear in uh, US Polo. Uh, and this business is, uh, you know, almost like 15% of the business uh, doing well, growing well, profitability, good stock turn. And now we're going to grow our company and our brands through launch of adjacent categories and other brands also. For example, Flying Machine, uh, we are testing uh, a few categories in that brand. Uh, we're adding some of the new categories in Tommy Hilfiger example, for example, a tailored blazer and suit, which was not there in that brand, we are adding that category. But the, the, the classical adjacent categories are footwear, innerwear, kidswear, women's wear, et cetera. And we are investing uh, ahead of time in these uh, categories and they're doing really good numbers right now. Understood. So uh, just a follow-up to this. So 15% when you say it is of the specific brands or 15% yes, of your current... Of, of uh, these specific uh, brands, yes. Okay, okay. So uh, I can assume 15% of overall power brand business or, uh, you know, 15%... Uh, today, uh, 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 it's largely in US Polo. Uh, so hmm. power brand also includes Arrow. We have not uh, added a lot of agencies in Arrow as yet. Uh, so as okay. we go, it we keep growing there. But currently... Uh, the main focus is in the USPA, our biggest brand. Okay, and what's the growth? You said it's 15% and you said it's growing well, but if you can quantify yeah, so in terms of... There are different growth. categories like footwear, I must uh, call out here, that has been developed as a online first mindset business. And, you know, it's grown really well. It's growing at more than 50% with very good stock turns and very good EBITDA margin. Uh, you know... Uh, uh, Innerwear is growing at double digit with healthy, you know, other business matrices. So uh, these categories have huge potential of further growth profitably going forward. Understood, understood. Um, and and do they also have better margins uh, compared to the core uh, portfolio? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Footwear has very good margin, very good stock turns, is very uh, uh, strong, and and USPA Footwear is a top ranked brand in Mintra. So, you know, in a very competitive world, it's already established itself as a ranked brand, right? So, uh, it, it, it builds the brand appeal also because a lot of consumers enter US Polo through footwear perhaps, you know, and, and they fall in love with US Polo brand because of its uh, exciting range of footwear that it has. And, and so, it's a brand additive both on appeal as well as on scale and profitability. Understood. Uh, and the second question that I had was on Arrow. So currently, if you could maybe outline in terms of size, uh, in terms of where where the peak size was and what the current size is, and and how soon do you expect Arrow to you know again uh, go back to its uh, peak revenues? Let me uh, say that in FY23, we expect Arrow to reach its peak revenue. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's maybe if you can quantify or put some, uh, let's say, what is what, what roughly yes, what let's wait quarters. for a few more quarters, right? I mean, we are in FY23 already. Okay. And and does Arrow also sort of in terms of uh, realizations and margins uh, deliver better at peak revenues uh, in terms of margin? Would it be a creative in terms of margins in your assessment? Yeah. See, uh, uh, it's a process. Uh, uh, Arrow gets. Uh, 
more impacted by COVID than other brands because of formal nature of his product line and also the fixed cost because the channel is largely depart, uh, department store and EBOs are a larger percentage in arrow. So uh, it gets impacted. So now today the focus is and the, all the KPIs we are chasing is to bring it to a decent level of profitability and which we expect to deliver in FY23. Understood, sir. Thank you so much for the answers. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may kindly press star 1 on your touchstone telephone. The next question is from the line of Naisir Parikh from Native Capital. Kindly proceed. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, you know, my question is just going back on the minority interest question. So, if there is 21 crores of minority uh, interest, uh, is it fair to assume you know that much profit would, is you know, reflective of the CK and TH brands, and so uh, the USK is obviously profitable. So, is it fair that you know between Arrow and Sephora, we would be losing you know, anywhere between 30, 40 crores? Is, is that a fair assessment, or how should we look at it? No, uh, I, I wouldn't comment on a specific number, friend. Uh, but like I said earlier in the previous question, that uh, you know, while Tommy CK are uh, indeed very profitable now, uh, that's a fact, and we are happy about it. And uh, US Polo is also uh, double digit uh, pre indies uh, EBITDA, and then it's looking strong going forward. Uh, Arrow has been sort of, you know, uh, getting impacted by COVID, and uh, that's why the, uh, the numbers look uh, smaller. But we are seeing a very uh, sort of a dramatic uh, turnaround in arrow performance, and we strongly believe the work is behind us. So uh, we will see uh, uh, hopefully uh, better times on this particular case in FY23. Uh, sort of follow up, you know, I think uh, you know arrow uh, has been you know is, is something that has been a struggling uh, brand really in uh, you know. Uh, there's a cycle in some way. So when do we, uh, if you can share some operational metrics or something, uh, because obviously the loss on Arrow is you know, significantly dragging the PNL, uh, really. Uh, so if you have some operating metrics, either in terms of full price cycles, or, uh, you know, in terms of how the brand has been performing, or is there any other strategic approach that you have in mind? Because uh, the, the brand has really, you know, when we compare to some of the leading brands like uh, of, of your, you know, some of the leaders, uh, the brand has been struggling for five to six years, uh, really. Let me answer uh, with the last two years uh, <clears throat> background. Uh, uh, trust me, we worked extremely hard in the last two years to uh, make Arrow a more desirable brand with lot stronger consumer pill. Uh, point number one, uh, in tune with the times and COVID times, we changed the product uh, category. So uh, it, while it is a top brand in the formal elegant wear, uh, we also <clears throat> uh, created a line called Sport where uh, it is more relaxed workwear, uh, which is right for the COVID time. And it's uh, doing fairly well uh, as a category in Arrow. Uh, we also changed the logo for Arrow. We created a new, more powerful A vector, brought it as a part of the logo logoization in the industry uh, to the pocket where consumers are really uh, liking it. We also created a point number two. We created a new store identity to refresh the brand in current times. Brand is from New York, so we took inspiration from the Art Deco look of the New York tall skyscrapers, and we created stores uh, which have shown a higher sales density, we opening more of stores of Arrow with the new identity. Third, we tied up with Rithik Roshan to show our commitment to the brand that we are still uh, investing behind this brand with a power brand ambassador like Rithik Roshan, you know, who has 50 million followers on social media, uh, large investment, even in COVID time, we never shied away from investing behind the brand. Uh, fourth, <clears throat> side is that we build a new team, building a new line of suit and blazer. Now, 
sum total of all the hard work uh, couldn't be seen in the peak COVID time when we, we saw three waves in last two years. We all know how COVID impacts uh, uh, businesses. Uh, what we have seen from the fall holiday where the, we saw the recovery in October, December period, we saw the trade uh, customers uh, sh uh, having more than 25% like-to-like -like store growth in Arrow. It's a smallish channel for Arrow, but we saw you know, really encouraging numbers there. Uh, we also saw high uh, <laughs> improvement in the sell-through as a percentage in fall holiday, uh, thereby the discounting started reducing by a few percentage points. Uh, we're very happy that, you know, in SS22, we launched the season well. Uh, our stores have <clears throat> gone off, uh, uh, started doing well. So this season, what the result that we will report after April, uh, June quarter, uh, we have seen very good like for like growth, very good uh, uh, full price sell through increase and very encouraging discount reduction in an arrow. Uh, in addition to that, a part of our supply chain uh, transformation project we have done on arrow, where we are trying to increase its uh, uh, categories uh, of core products. We want to push that business. And in April, we saw uh, that uh, the fruits of that uh, transformation project also started yielding results. So. Sitting here, of course, we've seen COVID times and we've seen the impact on the numbers. Uh, unfortunate, but that's a reality. And we are, we strongly believe that the worst is behind us. And we believe that uh, 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 in FY23, we'll see profitable performance from Arrow. Got it. So that is very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sagar Bhatiam from Prabhadas Leela Dhar. Kindly proceed. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, congratulations on the set of numbers. Uh, pretty encouraging. This quarter. I just wanted to understand a little bit more about your online positioning of the brands uh, going forward and what the management is looking at uh, in the next year, two years uh, from now, just on the online front and not on the retail front. Uh, See, we have a undisputed market leadership in online uh, space in apparel industry. We clocked 1,000 crore uh, uh, revenue, profitable, uh, and in COVID times, uh, when the consumer changed their habit, we were ready because we had invested uh, ahead of time in many things besides uh, our own website. Now in marketplaces and uh, fulfillment centers across the country, so we have we benefit of that uh, focused investment in the online channel. So today, uh, we all our brands uh, do very large online business uh, from wholesale business we do with the portals to our own marketplace, which is growing at a large uh, base and doing uh, you know hundreds of crores of business. We have our own brand dot <clears throat> now dot com, which is a very good consumer connect. We are chasing direct to consumer. Uh, uh, you know, appeal of the brand. So now and marketplace, which has grown in quarter four also had more than 25%. So there is a good traction. Uh, online has become somewhere close to 25% of the uh, AFL's revenue mix profitably. Now the idea is to continue to invest behind uh, this exciting channel and take this forward. So one of the aspirations will be to recruit a lot of young consumers, uh, you know, who are digital first mindset, through uh, online space and create, uh, you know, uh, uh, appeal for our brands so that we're doing a lot of assortment, product, assort, uh, product assortment online for and online, the SMUs that we do, which are based on the reality and analytics of the online world. And in the one year, we have really invested behind SMUs and we are taking that uh, idea forward uh, the website continues to sort of grow well. So we are, you know, investing a lot uh, uh, behind building the team and the assets to take the online business forward at a very healthy pace uh, because we are seeing a lot of traction in that space. And uh, Kulin, do you want to add anything more online space, please? Yeah, I think uh, you've covered... Uh... Uh, what we we are planning to do if you see there are uh, three or four very large trends which we are betting on 
I think the first trend is that online is moving away from a liquidation channel to being a channel of its own. And that means okay. designing product and designing a supply chain separate just for the online channel, which is what Shailesh was mentioning at, as SMU, specially made units. I think that is the future and that is what we are accelerating. The other big shift is that offline and online are converging. So how we are connecting our store inventory and whilst we have done it with our own dot com and some of the leading portals, many more portals are just now uh, becoming omni compliant. So connecting our stores to more and more online demand is the second large theme, um, you know, which uh, we are betting on. The third theme is, you know, that over time we need to own this channel more so the old paradigm was you sold to this channel and then you forgot about it the new paradigm is you directly engage with the customer through own.com and through marketplace as a model so we are strengthening our capabilities there and largely i think this lastly this channel is very powerful for adjacencies you know our case study of us polo with sneakers to become the number one sneaker brand in you know a couple of years time was only possible if you get your product strategy and your digital strategy right. So I think uh, we'll use this channel to really catapult into new categories in a disruptive way. So along these four themes, I think we are making uh, investments ahead of time so that we can fully capitalize. All right, sir, that was a pretty detailed explanation of what's there to come. Thank you for that so much. Thank you. Due to time constraints, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ankit Arora for closing comments. Thank you, everybody, for joining us uh, on the today. Trust all your questions were answered. If any of you have any further questions or need any clarification, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to take them offline. Thank you. Look forward to interacting with all of you next quarter. Thank you. On behalf of mm -hmm. Urban Fashions Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.